Well, Singapore is all geared up for an international robotics competition this weekend. The first global challenge will feature teams from some 190 countries in a tournament highlighting the importance of renewable energy. Clara Lee tells us what preparations were made to get the venue ready. This stage here at the Singapore Expo is where thousands of young people representing their countries will do battle. They'll design and build robots to navigate through a simulated world to produce hydrogen. Organizers are making sure that their participation will not be marred by administrative delays. Over the weekend, more than 1,300 participants and supporters will arrive at the event space. First things first, they'll get their registration done right here. After registering, all 191 teams will make their way to the pits. Each country's team will get a table to put last-minute touches to the robots they've built. But it's not all work. This is also where participants from different countries mingle, share local snacks and even souvenirs. Last year, Team Australia gave out boomerangs. Once it's game time, teams will enter through this tunnel into the main event space. This is where most of the action will be. More than 2,000 spectators will be seated in the bleachers to support the students. The matches will take place in five game fields, just like the ones behind me. Using their robots, different teams will compete against and work together with other teams. That's because the organizers say values such as collaboration will be key to addressing the challenges facing the planet. Perhaps chief among these is the example of the team pits, which serve as a base of operations for our teams to work on their robot and regroup after a match. These are both dual-sided and in close quarters with one another, which encourage collaboration between countries and the fostering of friendships across borders. All of this is in service of proving through example that a better, more collaborative world is possible. In line with the theme of the tournament, organizers have chosen to go green in their planning. Some of the initiatives to come out of that have been reduced hours of air conditioning, reusable water bottles for all team members. We also organized our busing of teams to the event to minimize time on the road and thereby emissions. Additionally, we have no plastic in the attendee badges, just paper to reduce our overall plastic use. He says these will be the standard when planning for future editions of the event. About 250 volunteers are involved in the planning and setup of this international robotics competition. Clara Lee finds out more from the hands that help. Hi guys, Hello. So what can I help with you? Amelia Weiler may only be 18, but she's a veteran in robotics competitions. With seven years of experience under her belt, she wants to share that passion with others. I'll be taking people around who are interested in FIRST Global and explaining to them what the program is, what it's about, and kind of showing them the field and talking to other teams with them. To get here, Ms. Wyla took a 19-hour flight from Rwanda, where she's based. There, she runs a tech firm that teaches young kids science, technology, engineering, and math concepts. Coming to Singapore meant missing some crucial work. We were trying to figure out who's going to be covering for me while I was gone, but because of the impact FIRST has had on my life, it kind of took first priority, and I was really excited to be coming here. Volunteers such as Jose Ramirez say they're giving back to the community because of the networks that they built in past competitions. Mr. Ramirez was part of Team Venezuela in 2018. You get a very unique uh, opportunity to connect with, with a lot of people that are different to you that you would probably never see in your life, but they're very special and very smart and they teach you so much. And not only that, you make friends, you, you, you grow with each other, you live through some of the most stressful time of your life. Since then, he's been finding ways to stay involved by being a mentor to his country's representatives, mostly remotely. But this time, he's making a physical presence to meet and help fellow robotics enthusiasts. I you know, studied abroad and making sure to save money for the next First Global, making sure that I had a role somewhere, either in the team or a volunteer. Those things that were those were things that I had to you know, look out for and then this year, you know, very excited to, to be able to come back. He hopes that those taking part this year will add to the growing pool of volunteers in future editions of this event.